Hello and welcome. So today's video is going to be on the cultivation of milk thistle. Perhaps not <clears throat> everyone's idea of a garden plant. They can be quite thuggish. Like a lot of members of the thistle family, they've got a lot of bad rep. They've got a lot of purported medicinal uses as well. Something I'm not going to go into in this video. You should always do your research on things like that before you take them. I love to grow them simply because I just adore their marbled leaves. I think they're beautiful. I think the flowers are lovely. And like I said, you just get these, when you, when you get them in a big clump planted together, you get these beautiful rosettes of these marbled leaves. I just, I just really like the way it looks. Probably a bit more suited to a less formal garden, something a bit more wild, perhaps a wildlife garden. And they do have their limitations. It can be a bit of a struggle growing them up here in the Hebrides because they prefer slightly alkaline soil. They also prefer good drainage, which isn't something we have in abundance up here. And they like sun. So true to a type of a lot of other Mediterranean, Mediterranean herbs, which is where they're from, that's what they like. Sun, drainage, slightly alkaline, but it is very possible still to grow them up here. I grow them as a biennial. So I collect the seeds in the late summer, early autumn. I sow them and then I put them through into the polytunnels until about November. So I'm going to show you the whole process anyway and then they'll, they'll flower the following year. I've heard of people growing them in, as an annual as well. Like a lot of plants, they don't necessarily stick to our strict rules. You know, something might be biennial, might act as an annual or might be a short-lived perennial so just bear that in mind and again i just like wild clumps of them of about 30 to 50. And i just think they're really striking when they're grown that way so without further ado let's have a look and see how we grow them up here so this is what we're looking for this is the milk thistle flowering head it is as prickly and stabby as it looks so you want to be very careful no matter what gloves you pick, it will definitely stab through. So go slow with that. So here's our milk thistle seed head that's dried for a couple of days inside. See it started to open up. So now we just separate out the seeds. These are the spiky bits that you want to be really careful of. So I just peel all those off first. Kind of start to see why it's so popular with a lot of native birds for nesting material. A bit soft and downy. But anyway, so the bottom, I'll do it down here so I've dropped them. So at the bottom of all this fluff, you'll start to see the, th the milk thistle seeds. I'll pass some over. So that's the business there. That's what we're after. And then what we do. do this really quickly but we start them off in these trays just to germinate put two or three in just double the seeds depth cover them up and we do that and I think we started about 20 odd trays this year so I'll go ahead and show you what they look like when they're done so that's the, the collecting and sowing very simple here we are about a month on, starting to pot them up. Now we actually got pretty badly hammered with pests, so bear that in mind, slugs will eat the seedlings. While the mature plants look pretty unpalatable, they're definitely vulnerable when they're this young, but we've managed to salvage a lot. You want to get them potted on as soon as you can. Now what you'll notice is the roots on these are massive, even as seedlings. So as soon as they germinate, get them into their pots. Here's what we've managed to salvage, still not bad. If, if half of these survive, we'll be happy. And here they are now, end of November. Looking good, looking very pretty. And I'll just sit in our polytunnel, ready to go up next spring. Thanks for watching, I hope that was helpful for some of you.